she disappeared over the edge. Huh? Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, whoa, dude! Holy frick! She's going crazy again! D Mimi? What's wrong? Mimi? Who's Mimi? How's it going, everybody? Put Lamont here back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, we started Dimi's route and got some insight into some of the events that have happened along the way uh, as to what was going on from her point of view, uh, whereas from Takami's point of view, it just looked like insanity or just didn't make sense in, in different uh, different ways, I guess. Uh, we saw how with the crucifixion case, how uh, she was just kind of thrust into a delusion because of a delusion synchro. Uh, so that was kind of outside of her will. That's why she looked like the murderer to us, even though she was not. We saw that she basically made all of the students have a delusion that they knew her, as well as Miss Mikun, that they were really close. Um... And apparently she thought that may not work because she had tried it on us, which is why she acted funny when she first visited us in the container house. That's why things didn't really make sense because of that, because she actively was attempting to lie to us to put us into a delusion. It just didn't work because delusion Takami is friggin' OP and doesn't realize it, I think, is kind of what they're going for. So she couldn't put him into a forced delusion. We also found out that, uh, well, I mean, we didn't technically find this out. I mean, it was just giving a little bit more context, I suppose. But uh, we, we kind of already knew that um, she was planning on uh, taking down Noah 2 for the real Takami because she cares about the real Takami. And uh, she didn't want to have to uh, hurt delusion Takami, even though... Uh, real Takami thought, what's it matter? It's just, it's gotta happen. It's just the way things need to be. And I'll use him to, you know, stop the world from blowing up. And then, you know, whatever happens to me, I guess I deserve it because I forced a delusion, uh, a delusional person to become reality and suffer and all that for, you know, a purpose they didn't ask for, right? So uh, he's a little bit more, I wouldn't say nihilistic, but he's a little bit more realistic, straight to the point, whereas... Dimi doesn't want anyone to be hurt, seemingly, so she was trying to take on the world herself, which we kind of already knew. So, uh, now we're here, and I don't know, can I skip this? I don't know if I can, I'll find out in a second. Um, but, now we are uh, just kind of moving along from there, so, without further ado, let's just get back into this, shall we? Oh, okay, so, uh, Right before uh, I do this, I also forgot to say that uh, we found out that real Takami is also, like, watching Hazuki and Sua as well, because uh, Hazuki was getting the the god's eyes feeling on the back of her, or on the nape of her neck or whatever. So uh, that's interesting. So he's kind of acting as this sort of god figure watching all of these events unfold and kind of altering stuff to prevent Nozomi from getting the info that they want or the things that they want, like at least immediately. So that was another thing. Anyway, it paused me here. So I guess uh, we will read this then, whatever this is. I, I don't even, this, this is sometime after O-Front and all of this stuff on the building happened. So, uh, we're somewhere in chapter six or seven, I think, so. All right, here we go. Standing in the center of a dimly lit room, Sakihara Dimi hung her head, remaining deathly still. Oh, this is probably when she's retrieving Nanami's hand, right? She's probably getting Nanami's hand from, uh, from the fridge where we put it. Because we know that she did that, right? That's probably what she's doing. The room's owner... Nishijo Takumi, Taku, was not currently present. He had not locked the door before he left, so Dimi had easily been able to enter. Yeah, you know, he didn't lock the door. 
Wow. Just like he was actually, his paranoia was actually right for once. He's like, oh no, maybe I didn't lock the door and all that. I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that. That's funny. She checked the time on her cell phone. It was nearly 10 p.m. Is Taku still at the Scramble Crossing? If she had been able, she would have helped him straight away. She had already attempted to once before, but the closer she had gotten to Scramble Crossing, the denser the crowd had become, and eventually, she had been rendered unable to move. In the end, the Esper Boys show had concluded before she had reached Ofront. It was then that she had heard Takami's voice. He pleaded with her to return Nanami's hand. It was not often that Takami would ask Themi for a favor. Nozomi had kidnapped Nanami, and they were currently subjecting her to all manner of torture. Takami had been able to locate her using his mind-reading abilities. As she and Nanami had been acquainted in the past, hearing this news broke Themi's heart. A cardboard box sat on the sofa. Contained within it was a cell phone, a petite bangle, and Nanami's severed hand. The sight left Themi at a loss for words. Concern, anguish, and sorrow overwhelmed her. All at once, memories of her own past hardships flashed through her mind. Forcefully biting her lip, Themi stared at the hand for a few moments. And then, with a deep breath, she gently closed the lid of the box, sealed it with duct tape, and left the room with the package in tow. Huh. Okay. Themi took out her cell phone and connected to the OneSeg television broadcasting service. The events at Scramble Crossing had been on the news earlier, so she tuned into it, hoping to confirm something. But when the channel came on, it was in the midst of a commercial break. Which must have meant that they were not broadcasting live anymore. In other words, Taku must not have been at Scramble Crossing anymore. Knowing this, Dimi reluctantly returned to the hospital room she shared with Takumi. Okay. The lights were off. The room was as pitch black as when she had left it. The bed was empty, as Takami was sitting in his wheelchair instead, something that Themi had become accustomed to. Do you have Nanami's hand? Yeah. I brought it with me. Themi opened the box and presented it to Takami. Thank you. Can it still be reattached? We can fix this, can't we? I don't know. But this hospital does have a cryopreservation facility. Of course, freezing it would be better than nothing, but there was no guarantee that it could ever be returned to her. That was what his eyes conveyed to her. It'll be fine. We'll fix this. I know we will. Themi boldly declared this with a positive flair. I believe, with all my heart, that we'll get it back to her. But first, I've got to get her out of there. I don't believe her life is in danger. There's no need to be so hasty. Well, don't you seem pretty calm about all this. <laughs> Sorry. Just forget I said that. More importantly, do you know where Taku is right now? He was brought to this hospital and is currently asleep in the psychiatric ward. Are you serious? Themi's eyes widened, and she immediately burst out of the room. Huh. Visiting hours had long since ended, forcing Demi to conceal the sound of her footsteps as she traversed the dim hallways. 
She knew that both Nozomi and the Cosmic Church of the Divine Light were among the hospital staff, and she could not afford to attract any unwanted attention. Oh, so this is interesting, right? I forgot about that. Yeah, so so this is a Nozomi thing. So Takumi must be hiding there to be like right under their nose, My is my guess, right? The thing is, is like, does he need to eat? Well, she feeds him, right? She's been giving him food. But shouldn't they know that Dimi's been entering in and out unless she's been using delusions? And if she has been, why does she need to be quiet now? Right? Like, wouldn't they know her and be like, because cause, uh, Notose already knows Dimi prior, right? So, like, it seems like they would, you know, know her. I don't know how she gets in and out. Either way, it like doesn't technically make sense. So either I'm missing something or that's like a plot hole. I can't tell. But anyway, um, this so this is OK. So this is definitely like right after Ofront. It's when he's in the hospital and then he gets woken up by uh, by Hazuki eventually. So I guess I guess Demi was checking on him then. Following a long and arduous trek, she arrived at the room that Takami had informed her of. Upon inspecting her surroundings to ensure she would not be seen, she slowly opened the door. The room was pure white, the entirety providing not even the slightest hint of warmth. Dimi silently approached the bed in the center of the room. Taku lay there, sleeping deeply. His forehead beaded with sweat, his eyebrows were furrowed, and a moan would occasionally escape his lips. Dimi reached out toward Taku's cheek and gently caressed it. I'm sorry. I couldn't protect you. Unable to withhold her emotions any longer, she whispered that into his ear. Aw. Sad. Sad. A world of complete and utter white. Oh, okay, I think we're back with Takami, right? So, I think I can skip this? Yeah, I can, okay. So we just got that little hint uh, of what Dimi did then, I suppose. Interesting. Oh, okay, stop me right here. So this is while we are in the hospital with uh, Miss Mikun and... Ayase, so I don't know why it's stopping me, um, because this shouldn't have anything to do with Demi, I don't think, so I guess we'll see what they want from me. He went to go right past me, but just before he did, he put his hand on my shoulder. I can't keep up with this anymore. Rest up to you, dude. <sighs> Okay. With a sigh of exasperation, he left the hospital room. L leaving me alone like this wasn't fair. Ayase hadn't even shown a hint of interest in Miss Mikun leaving. It was almost like she was pretending he had never even been there in the first place. She was always like this. Always so detached from everything. It felt like I was looking at someone fundamentally different from normal people. So, okay, before it goes further, I, again, I'm wondering, dude, I think I said this in the past. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did at one point. What if Dimi is a Yase's delusion? Like, she's her delusional, like, copy. Like how Takami created a copy? What if Dimi is also a copy? Maybe. Because they're mad at each other, right? We we know that, that she smacked her. I think they showed what the reason for that was, but it was still vague, if I remember correctly. Like, it showed what the combo was, but it wasn't like... It didn't really say a whole lot, you know what I mean? I, I don't remember it saying a whole lot. It's been a while since that first ending, so... um, Yeah, I'm trying to remember. But anyway, I just wonder if that's why we're pausing right now, because it's going to hint about something of how they're attached to each other somehow, right? How Ayase and uh, and, and Dimi are, are attached to each other? I don't know. 
You created it, did you not? The flower bed back then. That is how I realized that you have already awakened. I I'm not a gigalomaniac. Gigalo what? A gigalomaniac? Oh, I uh heard the name from Aoi Senna. Aoi Senna. Her. I see. I have met her only once. She, too, is a Black Knight of Gladiol. Black Knights of Gladiol? And Gigalomaniacs. Yeah, I think this is a different combo. Okay, I don't remember us talking like this uh, in the first route or even Ayase's route, so... Interesting. Did they mean the same thing? E either way, I can't do it. I couldn't even. I, I couldn't even get a D sword. You must overcome the divine punishment done unto you. Then, and only then, shall the sword be summoned. Divine punishment? Suffering. An eruption of mental overload. What lies beyond the gate to the heart? Or perhaps, mental torture. There are many ways one may put it. I... I I've already... Suffered through so much. Even now, I was still suffering. I was the laughing stock of Japan. The police thought I was a murderer. Shogun and Yuo were terrorizing me left and right. And everything with Nanami. Huh? I was once in a mental hospital. This is a story from when I was a child. Oh. Yeah. I already knew. I'd seen it online. But why was she suddenly bringing it up? I was there for just under five years. My mind was weakened greatly. That was why I attacked. I attacked everything around me, and at the same time, myself. Ayase's voice was a faint murmur. The girl that sat in front of me wearing pastel pajamas and tracing the creases on the sheets with her fingertip showed no signs of the strength she'd once had at the concert. The Ayase, the Fess from back then. Had she even been real? I often broke windows. I was a problem child. A faint smile formed on her lips. Those shards of broken glass. I could always vaguely see it there. See what? A sword. But I knew not what it was for many years. The time I learned it to be a D sword was around four years after I was admitted to the facility. Before then, I always did as I pleased. But one day, Every single employee in the facility was replaced all at once. I was tortured in countless ways for many months. And when my heart and mind were on the verge of breaking, 
I heard the voice of the greater will. And from that moment, I could finally summon it. Torture. It was divine punishment. Obtaining the power to defeat wicked hearts requires the purification of a wicked heart itself. So basically, she was telling me I needed to suffer more? Otherwise I wouldn't ever get a sword? If that was the case, then screw that. I didn't want to experience any more pain. I'd already been broken down over and over again. I just wanted to be left alone. At my wit's end, I felt the urge to scream and shout. But Iase's voice didn't allow me to. It is all a divine revelation. They should have already assembled in Shibuya, the Seven Black Knights. Next is only for them to awaken. Yeah, see, this is different than Ayase's ending, right? Where we were, like, consuming everybody's swords. Now it's now we're getting the band back together, so to speak, right? So then that's what the uh, the true ending's probably going to be. So my my wonder is how is this going to get screwed up with, with Themy? Because we've seen how, like, it slightly diverges and then screws everything up because of the other routes, right, with uh, with Yua and with Kozue and with with Senna and so on and so forth. So, uh, or tech, I mean, yeah, even Ayase. So, it's uh, I'm curious to see how that's going to diverge. If we do not hurry, the world will be brought to ruin by the machinations of Gladiol. Interesting, okay. So yeah, that was just showing the kind of ramp up I think that we were heading towards. So I think I can skip this now. Yeah, yeah, that's all that was doing. Interesting. Interesting. That had nothing to do with Demi. Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So we just stopped at the the uh what was this? At the beginning of was this chapter ten? What was this? What did that say? Chapter nine? It was it went really quick. But anyway, as you can tell. <laughs> This is uh this is when uh Senna finds out that that we created the uh IR2 formula. So I guess we'll see what happens with that in this version of the telling. Aoi-san's eyes shot wide open at the sight of my D-sword. Her blow had been fairly quick, but stopping it had been hardly any trouble. Our D-swords resonated with one another, releasing a shrill cry that enveloped the two of us. I could feel Aoi-san's negative emotions, her fury, her hatred, coming forth through her D-sword. Wowie zowie. Saki Hadashan was also a gigalomaniac. Oh, right, yeah, I forgot, yeah, because this is, okay. Oh, are we in, are we in Demi's head right now? I thought we were in Takami's. Wait a minute. We might be in Demi's head right now. Okay. <sighs> Behind me, Taku sank to the floor in shock. In that state, it would be impossible to get him to escape at this point. So I had no choice but to deal with Aoi-san somehow. Yeah, we are in her head. Did they do this in the first route? I can't remember. I almost kind of remember that suddenly, but... Okay. Do you know what exactly he did? The IR2 formula. He... I'm fully aware. Oh. I cut Aoi-san short. I didn't want Taku to even hear its name. Fine. Then I'll... If you force Taku to awaken, this will end in an even bigger disaster. Then I'll kill him before that. Even if you try, you will never be able to. Aoi-san was incredibly aggressive, but she fundamentally misunderstood how a D-sword should have been used. 
Her attacks were far too straightforward, far too impulsive. Treating her sword as just a simple sword would translate only to a little kid swinging around a tree branch. There was a distinct difference between someone who had been properly instructed on how to wield it and an ordinary high school girl. Dealing with her would be child's play. Nishijo has to die. He brought a freaking calamity into this world. Aoi-san had been consumed by hatred. Her negative delusions were clearly visible to me. Pouring out from within her, they transformed into a hulking black miasma and forcibly pierced into my dead spots. Aoi-san couldn't have been doing it consciously. However, they wouldn't normally be visible to just anyone she faced. This was a characteristic unique to Gigalomaniacs. When facing another human, it was possible to make that surge of emotions visible. And with that, you could lay all their emotions bare. I focused my attention on the images that were forcefully being projected into and eroding my mind. The emotions that fueled Aoi-san's hatred. Her memories. Right, because she was able to um, dispatch Aoi, right? She was able to dispatch Senna, like, immediately. Remember? And she was like, oh no, my dad, oh my dad, or whatever, right? So, yeah, that's how she did it, okay, because she could see her memories. That's interesting. Wow. I could see them. Her pain. Her sorrow. Her memories of the past that tormented her. And using those memories, I glared at Aoi-san and formed a delusion. I fabricated a fictitious scene that would twist the knife in her wounds. <laughs> a shudder ran through her body. Slowly lowering her sword, she then froze completely. Her expression showed she was clearly shaken. Her eyes were empty. She was no longer looking at me, nor reality. She was now inside the delusion that I had fabricated, but I had just given her a cue. The rest of the story was of her own making, guided by her own obsession. And now, Aoi-san could no longer fight. Now... No. I jumped. I could feel a voice reverberating within my mind. What will Saki Harashan do now that she's made a messy mess out of Seneshan's head? Are you going to kill her? Are you? I looked over toward the container house. <laughs> oh! If sees. If you say you're going to kill Seneshan... A sword of many facets. An overwhelming sense of corrosive misfortune. A pure, unadulterated savagery. And a destructive nobility. It was... Orihara-san's D-sword. Then Kozapi's going to add Saki Harashan to the baddie list. As for what happens to people on the list... <laughs> yeah, whoa, dude! Holy frick! She's going crazy again. Dude. Upon lifting her D-sword high up in the air, Orihara-san smiled cheerfully at me. Kosapi kills them all. I... k, -k, -k, -k kill them! All of a sudden, Taku raised his voice to a shriek. B both T Senna and Kozapi uh, are our enemies. They were our enemies all along. Th that's why you gotta k kill them, Beamy. 
I don't d don't want to die. Taku, just be quiet for a minute. And plus two. Arihara-san twisted her lips into a smile. Kosapia. Kill you both, sees. Oh, frick! Ooh! Oh, no! <laughs> Dude! Oh, no! Is this, is this the sword taking over again, like we saw in her ending? Oh, no. <gasps> it came like a storm. The sheer speed at which she charged at me was simply inhuman. I was taken by surprise. Orihara-san's D-sword came down on me like a stake being pounded into the earth. Yo! I immediately jumped back, but the impact was so strong I was blown back anyway. I somehow managed to land on my feet. Next came a horizontal swing. I tried to deflect it with my sword. Ooh. But I failed. I ended up taking the blow head on. My arms went completely numb. Uh -huh. Die! Die! Orihara-san charged at me with unbelievable strength. I had no room to counterattack. How was she so adept at fighting? Despite her small frame, Orihara-san swung her giant D-sword around with no issue at all. Her footwork was wild and unsteady. Each step she took was incredibly unstable. Her feet were barely touching the ground. Rather than she being the one swinging the sword, it felt as if the sword was swinging her. Sakihara-san and Takami-san were both baddies after all. So... Kozapi will kill you both! I won't... let you kill Taku! Oh, dang! As I desperately deflected Orihara-san's blows, just as I had done before with Senna, I focused on the negative emotions pouring out from within her. Uh-oh, she's gonna get her to see mirrors. Gay. The image that appeared in the back of my mind was a mirror. Wasting no time, I sent that delusion to Orihara-san's dead spots. Uh-oh. <laughs> Orihara-san's movements came to a sudden halt. Tears began to pour from her eyes. I let out a sigh of relief. I had to get Taku out of here while I still could. That was when I noticed. I... I couldn't see Aoi-san anywhere. I looked all around the rooftop and saw her standing at the very edge of it. I frantically took off running, but before I could reach her, her body slowly drifted forward. And then, she disappeared over the edge. Huh? Oh my gosh! Wait, did that- wait, that was that her delusion or was that real this time? Oh no! Oh frick! The sound of something crashing into the ground. The sound of something smashing against the earth. I heard it faintly in the distance. Had she died? Had Aoi-san... died? Because... because of that delusion I'd showed her? No. I didn't mean that. A fierce blast of wind came from behind me. The impact was tremendous. It felt like I had been hit by a truck. Ah! I felt my brain being shaken around inside my skull. Unable to brace myself beforehand, I was sent flying. I hit the ground hard, and a sharp pain shot through my entire body. I hadn't been cut in any way but I had taken an extremely hard blow from her fiendish D-sword. My vision was intensely blurry. I tried to get up, but I couldn't feel my legs. Wait, did she freaking... 
make her think she killed herself so that she could get the upper hand? Is that Senna behind her? I couldn't tell who I was anymore. I might have suffered a light concussion. <laughs> I tried desperately to look up. Who am I? 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 Orihara-san was staggering around, cradling her head in her hands. She violently shook it from side to side. Had the delusion I'd shown her made her lose sight of who she was? Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> she was moving toward Taku. She was going to kill him. Why didn't you run away? Why are you still here? I had to help him. I closed my fists. But my D-sword wasn't in my hand. I had accidentally let go of it when I'd been hit from the blast earlier. It was lying on the ground a short distance away from me. Wait, so did Orihara hit her? In her, like, fugue state that she's in right now or whatever? Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess she did. She still has her sword. What the frick? Die. 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 <laughs> Help me! Taka was crying out for my help. I have to save him. I won't let anyone kill him. But I'm too far away. I won't make it. Orihara-san had already raised her D-sword. Taka would die in an instant. He had sunk to his knees and could no longer move. In less than a second, he would literally be crushed by her D-sword. I have to save him. No matter what I do, I won't make it. Numerous voices surged within me. My thoughts grew erratic. Countless me's pierced me with their gazes from inside my head. Countless me's whispered with their mouths. The whispers continued to cascade, pooling together into a violent flood of voices, each one gnawing away at any and all reason I had. I desperately stood up, but I couldn't do any more than that. I won't make it. Uh! I won't let you kill him! I gritted my teeth. Taku is going to die. Kill her. Kill Orihara Kozue. If I can protect him, then nothing else matters. No. It's not like that. I... Kill her. Wouldn't it be better if Taku died here? Kill Orihara Kozue. Kill Nishijo Takami. That's the wish of both Sakihara Dini and Takami, isn't it? You're wrong! You're wrong! Taku! Oh... Before I knew it, the D-sword was in my hands. It was supposed to be on the ground, yet I was holding it. Oh! Oh, frick! She king Kingdom Hearts Keyblade freaking summoned that into her hands. What the frick? I felt the sensation of gouging flesh. I didn't know how I'd close the distance between me and Orihara-san, but when I looked, I saw that the D-sword I'd been holding in my hands had sunk deep into her delicate back. I... 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 I was resisting against a will of some kind. I had no intention of killing her. Or... Was this really my own will? My true nature? Orihara-san looked back at me with an empty expression on her face. Oh. Sakihara. Shan. 
It hurts. This is wrong. I don't want to kill her. If I don't stop, she'll... My D-sword wriggled and squirmed. As if it had a will of its own, it trembled with the joy of taking a life. The delight of bathing in blood. So it's not just Orihara that has this problem. So this is, I think, didn't, didn't, didn't Senna mention something about that with the anti-particles and all that? That like if they, if, the, if you get too overwhelmed, it'll like consume you, right? She said it from like a rational scientific standpoint. So that must be what's manifesting in them, right? Like that's what's, that's what's coming about in them maybe. But like, dude, I didn't know it would happen to all of them. I thought it was just Orihara that struggled with this. Okay. I frantically shook my head in denial. My D-sword's wings, its fangs, creaked loudly as they bored into Orihara-san's back. Even now, it was trying to gnaw into and tear her apart. Bro, this is sad. S stop I said stop! I tried pulling it out, but I couldn't. I couldn't move. I couldn't even let go of my sword. <coughs> Orihara-san coughed up blood. And when it landed on my sword, dying it red. Stop! <coughs> As if it was a pair of wings spreading. It twisted itself deep into Orihara-san's body and tore her apart. Blood burst into the air. And the petite girl, who had been alive just a second ago, transformed into nothing but mere lumps of flesh. Holy crap. Dude. Well, I guess that's how it happens then, how, how everything goes wrong. I was going to say, like, I was like, what... How does this go wrong where we don't have all the Black Knights all together again? But this, uh, that would do it. That would do it. Dang. What the frick, bro? So, it must have been that her negative emotions of, I can't save him, and he's gonna die, and I want to protect him, and, and all this other stuff. That must have been her negative emotions coming forth, and it built up too many antiparticles and then made her sword take over, right? Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Oh, man. Crimson, illusionary feathers poured down around me. No, I didn't wish for any of this. Seeking desperately for someone to save me, I looked around. Taka was staring at me as if he'd seen a monster. Yo, oh, she wants someone to save her too. Oh. Oh, the poetry. I didn't... I didn't mean... to kill them. I didn't mean to... kill them at all. But I killed them anyway. Dang, bro! Holy frick! Was that delusion? No, it's not! It's That's what they're going with. Oh my gosh, okay. Dang, bro! Holy frick! I can never, like, be certain, right? I always am like, I'm like, oh man, yeah, that sucks, but, like, it could just be a delusion and I just don't know it, right? Because I, I can't trust anything. Someone gets stabbed in this game and I kind of just, like, I'm like, oh, okay, but, you know... But is it real, though? <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> so it's like, I'm so desensitized at this point. I'm just like, I, I don't know until it actually seems to confirm it more. But heck, even this could still be a delusion for all I know. But dang, okay. Both Senna and Kozapi were dead. They died right before my very eyes. And Bimi had been the one to kill them. He was the one that wanted it, though, right? So he shouldn't even be mad. If he's at all 
like freaking out about this and being like, I can't trust her. He's freaking the stupidest individual I've ever had the displeasure of reading for because he, he specifically said that he wanted them dead unless that wasn't him. But I was pretty sure it's, it was Taku who said that. I think it's, I think it specified that unless Demi heard Taku's voice, but it wasn't actually him. It was a delusion. That's the only way that that would make sense because otherwise like what the frick, bro, you can't like, Talk about hypocritical. Like, you can't do that, right? Like, right now, she was lying down on the sofa, sleeping. After Kozapi had died, she'd started trembling, let out a scream, then immediately lost consciousness. I hadn't even been able to stand up for a while from the shock. I'd been horribly scared. My fear had kept building and building, and eventually... I couldn't stand to look at Kozapi's bloody corpse any longer, so I got up, carried Bimi to my room, and shut us in. She would occasionally let out a pained moan, but no matter how many times I called her name, she wouldn't regain consciousness. So, I just sat down, hugged my knees, and waited for Bimi to wake up. There wasn't much I could do about my trembling. Senna and Kozapi had just died, after all. Unlike the new gen victims, they were far from being complete strangers. I knew them, talked to them, spent time with them. Is he gonna think that she's the killer that after all this time? Because, like, I'm gonna be mad if he thinks that. Just yesterday, the three of us had eaten crunchy cuns together. Senna, Kozapi and I. When I saw that photo with the three of us in it, I bit my lip. It didn't matter how much I wanted to forget it. That scene ripped straight from a nightmare played again and again in the back of my mind. Kozapi's vivid crimson blood. The slimy, sickly texture of the glistening bones sticking out from her body. Her emotionless eyes that lost all light. And the indescribable fear and sickness I'd felt in the moment where I saw another person cease to be a person. The moment when her slender body had been ripped apart, had been burned into my retinas. In that moment, I learned how frail people truly were. I felt like I was about to throw up, and if I did end up doing so, that would make it the fourth time I'd puked. What had ended up happening to Senna? This was an eight-story building. Having fallen all the way from the roof, there was no way she'd made it out unscathed. She'd probably... No. Definitely died. The two of them were both dead. I couldn't believe it. It couldn't be real. It had to have been a dream. A nightmare. Yeah, that was the only explanation. Dying in such a horrific way. And if that wasn't already enough, it was Demi who had killed them. I didn't want to believe it. There was no way I could but it was the truth. I didn't understand why Senna and Kozapi had suddenly turned hostile and tried to attack me. She had said something about IR2? It probably had something to do with my essay from back when I was a kid, but I couldn't care less about that now. After that, Bimi had been revealed to be a gigalomaniac, something that honestly hadn't surprised me too much. But then, she fought to protect me. She might have gone too far, sure. But there was no way I was going to hold a grudge over that. Okay, good. Good, at least he's consistent. Because gosh dang, I was going to be so mad if he was like, She's the murderer, I knew it all along, you know. Gosh, I was going to trigger me. Still, if things stayed like this, both Demi and I would get caught by the police. Senna's and Kozapi's corpses were just lying around out there. 
Eventually, someone would find them and notify the police. I couldn't get caught. As if I'd ever let that happen. I could just tell them the truth. I hadn't killed anyone after all. Dimi had. And besides, Senna and Kozapi had attacked me first, so that had to count legally as self-defense. But I was well aware that none of that would work. Back when the crucifixion had happened, I'd almost been named the culprit. There was no doubt in my mind that it would go the exact same way this time. Moreover, I needed Dini. If she didn't exist, she wasn't here to protect me from the threat of Shogun. I would be completely screwed. So when I'd learned the truth that she was a gigalomaniac, I hadn't been horrified. If anything, I'd welcomed it. She wasn't powerless. She wasn't just a naive high schooler. She was my ally. One who even wielded the power to protect me from Shogun. That was why I wanted her to wake up so badly. And sooner rather than later, I'd get her to array Senna's and Kozapi's corpses with her delusion powers. And once she did that, the police would no longer be able to get us. Nobody had found their bodies yet, right? Dude, that's sad. Holding back my urge to throw up, I looked at the door. Kozapi's bloody corpse was just outside, and therefore unlikely to be found. But Senna's wasn't. Senna had fallen off of the roof, meaning someone could easily stumble upon what was left of her. It'd be the end if that happened. Seeing how Dimi wasn't waking up, I'd have to cover up their bodies somehow. Just the mere prospect terrified me. I didn't want to even look at someone's corpse. And that wasn't even mentioning the fact that I knew them, which made it so much worse. Even so, I desperately shook away my fears. And then, I went outside. I had to ensure my and Dimi's safety. Oh, frick. Oh, frick. It was already dark out, leaving my surroundings very dim. I didn't even have the moon to help. The clouds were hiding it. Straining my eyes, I looked over to where Kozapi was lying. Huh? Huh? But I couldn't find it. I couldn't find Kozapi's tragic corpse. What the frick? There was still a pool of blood, so I couldn't laugh it off as the... It was all just a dream plot twist. But her corpse was completely gone. What the... Starting to get really confused, I stuck my head over the edge of the roof and peered down at the street below. There was no one there, and Senna's corpse wasn't there either. There was clearly something down there, something I immediately understood to be a pool of blood. But that was it. No people, no corpse, nobody freaking out. Nothing. Where had her corpse gone? The corpse had definitely been there after Dimi had lost consciousness, so Dimi couldn't have erased her with her gigalomaniac powers. But then, who could have? Ayase? No, she was still hospitalized in Yayogi. Then, Shogun? But he was my enemy. There was no way he'd ever do something that would have benefited me. What the heck was going on? Feeling both vaguely anxious and incredibly relieved about the corpses disappearing, I let out a deep sigh. It probably was Shogun then, right? That would actually make sense, because he actually do he is trying to protect him, right? Also trying to protect uh, Dimi, so... 
I mean, that would make sense. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Then, I felt chills on the nape of my neck. Yep, has to be him then, because we know that that's him now. I was being watched. It was the usual mysterious gaze. Shogun? Is that you watching me? Don't! Look at me! I ducked into my room. Uh. Uh. Demi had gotten up. She was looking around the room with a vacant expression on her face. Guess she'd finally woken up. But, what should I say to her? Killing Senna and Kozapi had been a pretty extreme shock to her. Then again, that was bound to happen if you killed someone. It wasn't like P. Kane in ESO. She'd also said she didn't mean to. And I was sure that only made it worse. I didn't know what to say at a time like this. So in the end, I couldn't help but say nothing. Demi looked at me, then tilted her head curiously. Where am I? Where's this? Huh? Who are you? Demi was acting strange. D Demi? What's wrong? Demi? Who's Demi? Is it me? But I'm not Demi! What are you saying? S -s -s Snap out of it! Um... My name is... My name's... Hmm... <laughs> I don't know! You're, you're kidding. You're kidding, right? I pressed her for an answer. Nope! I'm not! Right when she said that, Demi jumped into my arms and started clinging to me. She rubbed her cheeks against mine like some spoiled kid wanting attention. Having her so close to me, and so suddenly at that, I started panicking. Dude, is she like disassociating or something? Isn't that what the cool kids call it? Disassociation or whatever? Something's happening here. She's like freaking regressing into like a childlike state. So, who are you? Are you my friend? You've gotta be. Friends are, well, friends are people who are nice to me. You're not mad, are you? It makes me sad when people are mad. Also, pain makes me really sad, too. I don't like it. Amnesia. Or maybe even some form of age regression? I thought this kind of thing only happened in Adoge. I would have never even dreamed of actually running into a situation like this IRL. But that was only a possibility. The sheer amount... Themi had freaked out when she'd killed Kozapi wasn't normal. And... All those who have become gigalomaniacs broke at some point in their lives. I remembered the late Senna's words. Themi might have broken once again. She killed her own heart and mind. Suddenly, those words came to mind. I couldn't quite remember where, but I had a feeling that someone had told me that before. Right, so she broke- well, we already know she broke once, right? We know because of Norose. She has history with him, so he was- or she was the, the first subject before he got Nanami, seemingly. So that was the first time now she's breaking again? Or in a broken state, I guess? Okay. If Demi had killed her own mind from the shock of having killed Kozapi and Senna, 
and I was talking to an entirely new personality she had created. I could understand why she was acting like a child. DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, also known as Multiple Personalities. Uh, would you count that as this, maybe? I don't know if you'd count what she's doing as DID. Interesting that it's brought up again, but I don't feel like this would be DID. Because, like, I guess it depends, right? Is is Themy still inside there somewhere? Or is, is this, like, her just creating a new personality for herself? To like overwrite the other one, you know what I mean? I guess I guess it would still be kind of the same, but it I don't know, it feels different. I feel like this is different than DID. Yua had accused me of having it. Obviously I didn't have it, but maybe Themi was suffering from it now. This was all just speculation, of course. What I did know, though, was that the childlike Themi in front of me now was nothing like the Themi I knew. She wasn't the same girl who told me she'd stay by my side, the girl whose kindness had enveloped me. She was completely different now. No. I fell to my knees on the spot. I was overwhelmed with despair. As Themi clung to me playfully, she peered at my face curiously. Her eyes were so... serene. So beautiful. Purity overflowed from them. Purity... that I couldn't stare back into. In a way, we were lucky that Senna's and Kozpi's corpses had disappeared. But... if Themi was like this... Who was supposed to protect me now? Dude, he's still selfish, man. He can't break it. Can't even care about her in this moment. 